everybody, welcome to the channel and welcome to another episode of Beyond the Recipe, where we take you past the sausage making recipe to help you become a better sausage maker. On today's episode, we are going to be answering two of the most popular questions that I get. What cut of pork is the best to use for sausage and what can I substitute back fat for if I can't get any? We're going to answer both of those questions and more. Thanks for joining us. Let's get into it. We are going to set the foundation for today's episode with some words of wisdom. If you're serious about getting into charcuterie, you know the craft of manipulating meat, find a butcher, get to know your butcher, and more importantly, become friends with your butcher. A great butcher is a sausage maker's best friend and can do wonders for the craft. And don't get me wrong, I love the big box stores. You can get your discount meat and they do have their place, but every once in a while, you're gonna need a special cut that the big box stores just doesn't have and you can often find those cuts at your butcher shop. And the better friends you are with them, the more likely they are to reserve those unique special cuts when you need them. I love the craft of butchery, but unfortunately it's a dying profession and I think we should support it every chance we can. You know, keep those bearded butchers in business. Here where I live, I deal with three or four different butchers and they're absolutely amazing. And today I was able to get a half a hog for a buck a pound. That is incredibly cheap. So this entire hog is going to go to sausages. And I thought it would be a great idea to break down this hog and show you the different segments of the pork and how they would play in a sausage recipe. Now, I do want to say that what you are about to witness is a down and dirty butchery of half a hog. I'm not trying to extract certain cuts. I'm not trying to bring this to market. This entire hog is basically going to be deboned, skinned, and turned into sausage. If I wanted to take this to market or if somebody were to ask me for a prosciutto cut or a guanciale or a, you know, copa cut, I would certainly butcher this very differently. But for the purpose of this video, this will do just fine. Let's get into it. Here we go. This is our half a hog. Absolutely beautiful, incredibly fresh. And uh, just so you know where we live, the hogs are slaughtered incredibly young, 170, 180 pounds. Looks like this little piggy went to market at about 150 pounds. So this portion is roughly 75 pounds. So we're going to break this down into segments and talk about each piece and how that might work in a sausage recipe, starting with the head. We're going to remove the head by cutting right at the neck until we get to the neck bone. That's going to keep us from cutting all the way through. And the neck bone is very easily snapped just by bending the head uh, in one direction fully, just like so. There we go. And that pops right off. So let's go ahead and take a look at the head a little bit closer. And if you'll notice, you'll see the cheek meat sort of protrudes from where the snout is. And there's a very natural crease underneath the ear that I've already removed. My dog loves the ear once it's been dehydrated. Great chew toy. But you'll notice that natural crease, that's the cheek meat. And we're just gonna take our knife and follow that seam and remove the cheek. This is known as the jowl in Italy. This is the cut that's used for guanciale. This is meat that's dry cured and used in the Roman carbonara. So let's go ahead and basically now fillet this off of the cheekbone. And with our boning knife, we can just scrape that cheekbone and our cheek meat will just roll right off. Once removed, you also have to remove the glands that are part of the jowl, uh, which are very easy to see. But once you do all that, this is what your cheek is gonna look like. And notice how it looks. It looks just like bacon. Matter of fact, this is called cheek bacon because it has the same fat to lean ratio and it cooks up just like bacon. So this cut has about 50% fat and 50% lean meat. Works well in sausages and it's a great substitute for back fat in the event you can't find any. So just work out the lean to fat ratio. This right here, these are the glands that we removed from the jowl. We're just gonna discard those. And as far as the head goes, there's really not much else that we can use when it comes to sausages. I mean, the tongue is incredibly delicious, very, very tender, but I would braise that by itself. There is a lot of collagen and there still is quite a bit of meat on the head. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to clean the head up, put it into a pot, cook that down, and end up with either a really rich collagen stock or a beautiful hog head cheese, something like that. So either way, let's go ahead and move on to the next cut that we're gonna talk about, which is the hind leg of the pig. I like using the hind leg of the pig. It is incredibly meaty. It's fairly easy for me to get, and where I live, it's not too incredibly expensive. Uh, we are gonna remove the trotter and the hawk, and we're gonna 
toss that into our stock pot, which we have going as we speak. I'll show you that here in just one second. And we're going to go ahead and debone this hind leg by removing the H bone and then the uh, leg bones as well. The fat content on this cut really comes down to the variety of pig that you are using. This particular one is incredibly lean, but no matter what, you are going to have more lean meat than fat when it comes to the hind leg of the pig. The meat here works great for sausage, very flavorful. And if you are going to use this cut for sausage, you're almost always going to have to come in with a little extra fat, whether it's from the cheek or back fat, uh, because there's just not enough fat on this particular cut. There's the bones. Let's go ahead and throw that into our stock pot. And this is what that cut looks like deboned. Notice just not a lot of fat, at least on this particular cut. There may be three to 5% uh, total fat on what we're working with here. So I'm definitely going to have to add some kind of fat in order to get that 25, 30% ratio that we're after. All right. So let's move on and talk about what's left. We've got the belly and we've got the shoulder. So right now let's go ahead and remove the shoulder. This cut is basically going to consist of two parts, the shoulder, which is at the top, and then the picnic, which is directly underneath it. And uh, we're going to go ahead and remove the trotter and the hawk as well. So, you know, you could smoke the hawks, make really great smoked ham hawks, amazing. But that's going into the stock as we look at this top cut. The shoulder of the pig is quite possibly the most popular cut when it comes to making sausages. Uh, let's go ahead and take this, also throw it into our stock pot. And the reason this cut is so popular is because the shoulder naturally has about a 70% lean to about a 30% fat ratio. Notice right here, we've got a nice little fat cap right on the top. When we refer to back fat in some of our videos, that's what we're referring to. And if you use this cut exclusively, you can make an absolutely brilliant sausage without having to add anything to it. You don't need to add any fat because it has the proper amount of fat already in it. So if there was a perfect cut for making sausage, this would be it. This is the pork shoulder. It's also known as the Boston butt. You can usually get it anywhere. Let me give you a center slice and show you what it looks like. Absolutely gorgeous. Very nice distribution of lean to fat. Like I said earlier, if you only use this in your sausage, you would have an amazing sausage. Let's go ahead and move on to the picnic. Now, notice this little section here at the bottom. I did cut my picnic a little wide. This is actually part of the belly. And so we're going to remove the skin and then remove that flap so that we can only look at the picnic. But the belly, which we'll cover here in a second, is a fattier cut of meat. And as you can see right here, this is where you get your bacon and you've got a lot of fat. You've got a lot of lean. And we'll talk about the specifics here. But for the moment, let's look at the picnic. This cut, much like the ham, can also be used for sausage, but there is going to be more lean than fat. Uh, this particular variety pig doesn't have much fat on it, at least on the picnic. And we're probably talking about a fat percentage of anywhere between three to 5%. So once we debone it, you'll have a better idea of what we're looking at. The interesting thing about the picnic shoulder is that there's a lot more knife work involved to clean this meat up. You have to remove tendons. Overall, this is a lean cut. It works great for sausage, but you are going to have to add some fat. You can add back fat. You can add cheek fat if you're going to go the pork route, or you can add belly fat, which brings us to the final cut of the pig, the belly. Now, you got a lot of premium cuts here. You've got the tenderloin. You've got the loin. You've got the ribs. You've got, of course, the belly, which is where we get the bacon. So let's start with this section right here. This is what we call the leaf fat. And this is fat that's typically used to render down and turn into lard. Now, technically speaking, you could render down any of the pork fat and turn it into lard, but leaf fat works the absolute best. It's the most neutral in flavor and produces beautiful snow white lard. This fat does not make for good sausage fat, so don't try to add that to your sausage recipe. It just doesn't work out so good. All right, let's go ahead and remove the tender loin. That's this piece right here, 100% lean. And normally the tender loin is not used for sausage making, although you certainly can. The reason it's not used is because you could typically find lean meat cheaper from other cuts. The tenderloin has higher value in other dishes. Uh, but if you are going to use the tenderloin, you will have to add fat because it is totally lean. So let's go ahead and debone what is now left. And we have the loin of the pig and then we have the belly. So let's just separate the loin and the belly and look at those two pieces separately. Both of these cuts are fairly easy to get. If you look at the loin, you will also notice that it naturally has a fat cap on it and it runs the length of the loin. And this is the cut where you get your boneless chops, your loin roast, things like that. And typically what butchers will do is they'll remove uh, that fat cap or at least some of that fat cap and sell the roast or the loin by itself. 
and then use that fat to sell to the public or make sausage. That fat right there is great fat for sausage that's back fat. It's absolutely brilliant, and that's usually what you're going to be getting if you get back fat from your butcher. So let's look at the last piece. This is the pork belly, and the pork belly has usually between a 30 to 50 percent fat to lean ratio. If you have a fatty pig, usually you have about a 50 percent lean and a 50 percent fat in the belly. If your pig is a little more on the lean side, a little like mine is, then the fat ratio may be a bit lower. The pork belly is a nice cut to use for sausage, especially when you mix it with other lean meat, and it's an adequate substitution for back fat. Although the fat in the belly is a little softer than pork back fat, so you do want to make sure that when you process your sausage meat, it is ice cold so that you don't smear the fat. All right, let's recap. So the pork cheek, also known as the jowl, is a great cut of meat to use in sausage. It has about a 50% fat and a 50% lean ratio, and it's an adequate substitution for pork back fat in the event you can't find pork back fat and you need to add more fat to your sausage. The hind leg of the pig, aka the ham, is an incredibly lean cut of meat. It also works well in sausage, but you are going to have to add some sort of fat in order to get that 70-30 fat ratio. When it comes to the shoulder, of the pig, this is hands down the best cut of pork to use for sausage because it naturally has a 70% lean to a 30% fat, which produces a nice juicy sausage. Just make sure that you buy a fatty pork shoulder that has the fat cap already on it. When it comes to the picnic, much like the ham, it is a lean cut, and if you use the picnic, you will have to add additional fat to your sausage. The tenderloin and the loin are both incredibly lean cuts. You do have that fat cap on the loin, though, that works great for additional fat in your sausage. And then you have the pork belly. Much like the pork jowl, this is a nice cut to use in sausage, especially when mixed with other lean meats, and it does have quite a bit of fat, anywhere between 30 to 50 percent, depending on how fat your pig was, which makes this an adequate substitution for pork back fat. All right, folks, there you have it. I hope you found this information helpful. You know, understanding the different cuts of pork and how that may work in your sausage recipe so that next time you're at the grocery store, you might consider some of the more less popular cuts and toss them in might save you a couple bucks. The only thing that you have to consider is whether or not you need to add additional back fat or belly or cheek to accommodate for the fat in your recipe. Now, in my opinion, Pork back fat is the fat of choice, but what happens if you have a difficult time getting that? Well, the second best fat to use will be belly or cheek. They are going to be a little bit softer, but they're certainly adequate. You just want to make sure that you maintain very cold temperatures when you're grinding and mixing so that you don't smear that fat. Another option for fat if you can't get back fat is beef or lamb. Now, you got to know that beef or lamb fat is not nearly as creamy as pork fat. It has more of a waxy texture, a bit of a stronger flavor, and in some circumstances can be yellowing. But if none of those things matter, those are great options for sausage or salami. Other fats that work well in sausages are chicken fat, goose fat, duck fat, although their melting points are much lower. So you definitely want to make sure that those fats are completely frozen when you grind them and that your mixture is very cold when you mix them so that you don't smear those fats. I love duck and goose fat in a sausage. It has a great flavor. Doesn't work so good for salami, but for sausages, it's absolutely incredible. So there you go, folks. That's all I got for you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And if you got anything out of this video, drop me a great big thumbs up. If you're new here and you like the Beyond the Recipe series, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell as our goal is to help you become a better sausage maker. And I don't want you to miss a single episode. Thanks for being here. Bye-bye.